Uh, maybe two weeks or so, uh, there's been a phrase, uh, uh, just a scriptural phrase that's been been coming to me, and I actually thought maybe we were going to deliver it last week, and it wasn't the time. But the phrase is, uh, is there not a cause? And in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, uh, to give you the setting, we're actually going to look at verse 29, but to give you the setting, <clears throat> Israel has set their battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines have their champion, Goliath, that's going out and uh, intimidating the Israeli's army. And uh, Jesse has a couple sons in the army and he sends David down to uh, check on them to see how things are going and the and uh, he takes a gift to the captains and all that. And so while David's there, Goliath comes out and makes his boast and uh, defies the armies of God. And um, it bothers David in a different way than it's troubled the rest of them. The rest of them fear, their hearts have been stricken by fear. They run into their tents, and including the king, Saul. They're afraid of this intimidating giant, Goliath. And David looks at this from the perspective of, uh, who is this that's defying the armies of God? Who has come against God? Not, not looking at it from a fearful perspective, but looking at it, from a different perspective, this, this can't continue. Something needs to be done about this. And so he starts asking questions. And uh, they, uh, they tell him that, uh, you know, the king says that if anyone will go up against that giant and kill him, that the king will make his father's house tax exempt and he'll give him his daughter as a wife. And so David starts talking to somebody else and they're telling him the same thing. And Eliab, his brother, hears it and gets mad. It's interesting how people that aren't doing anything for God get mad at people who want to do something for God, isn't it? And so Eliab actually... Uh, tries to humiliate him. Uh, what are you doing here? I know, I know why you're here. Where, where are those few sheep? You know, you're, the, you're a shepherd and not even a big one. <laughs> you understand? So I know what you're up to. And in verse 29, David said, What have I now done? What's my error? Is there not a cause? Do I not have a reason for asking? Am I just asking to be asking questions? Am I just playing games? Or do I have a reason for asking what I'm asking? I go beyond some things here and see some things in this. Not by chance that he just happened to be there at that particular time, but is there by the ordination of God. Jesse thinks he's sending his son. David thinks he's going because his father sent him, but God had a plan. And so often we don't even know why we do what we do or why we go where we go, but God sees something that we don't see. And there's a cause. There's a reason. There is a cause for you being alive today. There's a reason for you being in earth today. There's a reason for you being where you are geographically. God had a cause. And He wants you to catch the vision. He wants me to catch the vision of the cause. 
I've been meditating on this and I was thinking about Jesus and coming to earth. He had a cause. Before the founding of the earth, the lamb was slain. This is really uh, 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 sort of mind boggling and we only have just about that much of a vast amount of information you understand but God knew before he created humanity that humanity was going to disobey him but he created him anyway but he didn't create him until he had a remedy for that knowing what man was going to do God had a plan so Jesus came to earth for a reason. He had a cause. And do you know he knew when God sent him into the womb of Mary, the Word. He knew from the beginning why he was here. He knew his cause. And at the age of 12 years old, he said to his mother, who was sort of chiding him a little bit, because they had forgotten him and left him in Jerusalem, and for three days he was there. When they found him, where was he? In the temple. And his mother's child again, he said, you know, we've been, we've been looking for you. Didn't you know that I'd be in my father's house? There's a reason for me being here. And it's all about him. Not about me. Isn't it so interesting how we can lose sight of the very cause of being in earth. For this purpose, 1 John, the third chapter, verse 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus' reason for coming to earth was to take out the enemy that was trying to take out humanity. It goes, it, it, the parallel runs with David. And David just announces, um, I'll go. I'll go. Sort of like Isaiah when God says, who can I send? You know, if God says that to most people today, they, they have a name. Well, send Joe, send John, send Tom. Isaiah said, send me. Jesus came here for a reason. David went into that camp for a reason. And here's what David's thinking about. Who is this that is opposing what God has ordained? And that what Goliath's doing. God had ordained that nation to represent him in earth. Who's opposing that? How dare he oppose that? How dare he defy the armies of God? All good. And Saul gets word. And so the king brings him, you know, has him brought to him and you just by paraphrase, you're just a punk kid. <laughs> you understand? You just you just young. That, that guy's been a warrior longer than you've been alive. You're no match for him. You see, a lot of people have that mentality. When you don't know your cause, you see your you can see yourself small. Or when you do know your cause, other people can try to discourage you from fulfilling your purpose for being here. Now, who do you think you are? 
But he had had a couple of personal experiences. One with a lion, one with a bear. And through his personal experience, he realized what the Lord could do. He realized the power of God through his personal experience. I did it with my bare hands. And he had perfected his skills with the sling, you understand, over those few years. But Saul thinks that he needs to have the weapons of the natural, the carnal weapons, the sword, and have the, the armor. Wasn't good enough for Saul, <laughs> but he thought David needed it. So he puts all this stuff on him and it weights him down. I'm going to tell you, doing it other people's way will weight you down. Trying to, to do things with, with their skills, with their whatever, will weight you down. And he says, I, I, I can't use this. I haven't proven this. I've proven this. This works. That's hindering me. And so he goes up with what he's already proven before the Lord, and he goes up, not in his might, not in his power. He doesn't even go up as a warrior per se. He goes up as a servant and a messenger of God, and he just tells Goliath, who's making his boast, you know, what are you, what are you guys doing sending some kid out like this with a stick and, and you know, a sling or whatever? David said, I'm going to feed you to the bird. I'm going to take your head off. Yes. Pretty good boast for a guy that doesn't have a sword. <laughs> you understand? But what does he have? He has a reason. He has a purpose. And he has a confidence in God. You understand? And because he knew his reason and because he was confident in that, he did exactly what he said. He took him down with the sling, with the stone. And then he used the enemy's own sword to cut his head off. You understand? He knew his reason. Jesus knew his reason. Think about this. He knew he was going to the cross when he came. That's why he didn't resist going to the cross. That's why when he's tried, he doesn't make any defense whatsoever to the point that, that is frustrating the ones trying him. The high priest that I adjure you. <laughs> you talk to me. <laughs> Pilate said, you don't have anything to say? Don't you know I have power? Not knowing that Jesus had more than he did. <laughs> He said, you wouldn't have any power. You wouldn't have any authority unless it had been given to you. The bottom line, I know what I'm doing. I have a cause. I have a cause for not talking to you. I have a cause for yielding to the cross. I have a cause for giving my life. My cause is to redeem humanity. There is a reason for me doing what I'm doing. Now I want you to think about it. How many of us do what we do because of a God-given reason? Or how many of us just go through the motions of doing things just to do them? You know, I remember I used to do things and Daddy would say, why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> I know why I do what I do today. I have a reason. And so do you. And it's interesting how Sherry opened up some things, you know, with, with that very thing dealing with the presence you have on the inside of you. Is there not a cause to take those presents and give them away? Is there not a cause to use the presence that's been given to you? 
Think about it. I was listening to a song last night. It's the first time I think I've ever heard it. It's just simply called The Gift. But there's one line that really got my attention. It was your birthday, referring to Jesus being born into earth. It was your birthday, and I got the gift. You do understand Jesus is the gift. He didn't come for himself. He was doing all right before he got here. (laughs) You understand. His reason for being here was for us. Our reason for being here is for others. We have come... To serve the Lord. Forever how many years you live. Your reason for living. Is to serve the Lord. And when I say serve the Lord. I'm not talking about just. Praying and. Singing and saying. I love you and this type things. I'm talking about. The slave to the master. Whatever he's wanting, you're serving. That's our reason for being here. Now, what greater reason could anybody have than saying, I'm here because God sent me. I have a cause. But you must know your cause. David realized that he was there to take a giant out. Why are you here? God sent you here to take some giants out of people's lives. You understand? People that are fearful, people that are intimidated by the threats of their surroundings, and they're running, they're hiding. They don't know what to do. And God puts us in their path to rescue them, to deliver them, to come alongside. You understand? Not calling them fearful and chicken and all these type things. David, I don't see David making any remarks before or after to his brothers or anyone else. He was focused. Focused on his reason for being. Even when he, when he became king, he still knew that his purpose was to represent Lord, the Lord to the nation. His purpose was to take, keep that nation focused on the Lord. God said he's a man after my own heart. Can he say that of us? That we are pursuing the heart of God to the point that we want to do in earth what God wants done. Now that brings a little insight into the Lord's Prayer as we call it. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. So how's that going to be accomplished? How's that kingdom coming and the will being done? We open ourselves up to the Lord, the King of Kings. He sets up His throne in our hearts and then we start serving Him, doing what He desires and His will is done in earth. Pretty basic, isn't it? Is there not a cause? Yes. I don't believe anyone who's committed suicide would have ever followed through had they realized there was a reason for living. You with me? People would not give up if they realized there is a reason for living. And I don't believe people would be idle 
if they realized there's a reason for being about the Father's work. There's a reason. Jesus said, work while it's day. The night's coming. You won't be able to work. You and I have a window of time to fulfill our purpose. Have you ever thought about that? None of us know how long we'll live. But God has set a period of time for us to get a job done. I don't want him to say, why didn't you? And I know you don't either. So we'd better start thinking about why we're here, the cause. And then strive to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Don't see yourself as someone insignificant that really it doesn't matter if I do anything or I don't do anything. The truth is God's dependent upon you to do what he's ordained you to do. Well, how do I know that? How do I know what he's ordained me to do? That's the question. People are looking for some big booming voice to say, do this, do this. It doesn't work that way. You keep yourself available and you do what you know to do. If you can meet a need, you meet the need. You remember what Jesus said concerning the sheep and the goats? You know, to the one he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was naked, you clothed me. Sick, in prison, you visited me. That's it. When did we do that? You know what that tells me? They didn't really have the full concept of why they were doing what they were doing. There was something on the inside motivating them. There was a cause. What was the cause? There was a need that they could meet. So there, because of the need that they could meet, there's a cause for meeting that need. That person needs me. And there's no fanfare. It's not that you're advertising what you've done. It's just you see a need and you meet the need. God saw a need in humanity and he met the need by sending his son. Jesus saw the need. And so all the time on earth, he's given himself to meeting needs, meeting needs, healing, doing miracles, forgiving sin even. Right? There was a reason. There was a cause. Somebody's in trouble. They can't help themselves. See, there's a lot of people out here that can't help themselves, but we can help them if we'll just do what we know to do. And honestly, that's what God requires of you. Do what you know to do. And it can be in just a prompting, an impression. Not something that's just rattling you and trying to get your attention, but something that just, it may just be a very light thought. Or, I should do such and such. Follow through. There's a reason for that coming to you. You with me? These things aren't just passing along for no reason. There's a cause, and God wants us to go start stirring ourselves up. Stir it up on the inside. Stir up the gift in you. Stir up the Spirit of God on the inside of you to the point that you're paying attention to the Spirit. And when you start paying attention to the Spirit, you'll start meeting needs. But we have to get out of the mentality of, I want my needs met. You'll get yours met by meeting the needs of others. Jesus said, don't think about those things. 
Focus on the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if you focus on God's dominion, God's rule, God's righteousness, you will be helping other people. And when you do, you're serving God. We just had the wrong concept of what serving God was. Well, I'll live the best I can. I'll read my Bible every day and, and I'll pray, you know, before I go to bed at night or whatever. Uh, so I'm serving God. Have you done anything productive for him? Or are you doing that just to soothe your conscience? You see, a lot of people go through the motions and they say, well, I should go to heaven because I've done such and such and such and such. That's not what it's about. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ gets you eternal life. But this is physical life. God put us here to meet needs in earth. Every one of us are to be giant slayers. You understand? It's not for you to identify. It's just for you to do what God impresses you to do. And you take care of business. And when that person has a need... Take care of business. It may not seem like a big thing to you, but it may be a Goliath to them. It may be something they can't conquer, but you can. We have a cause. Let's not miss our hour of opportunity or our time of visitation. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Really, that's the message. Is there not a cause for me questioning all these things? Yeah, there's a reason. I'm not asking for my benefit. But his asking questions got him in the presence of the king. Which put him... In an area to where he was authorized to go against the enemy. You understand? There is a cause. Start listening to the Lord. Amen? That's the message. Real simple, isn't it? Father, I thank you that you bless us indeed. You enlarge our territory. Your hands with us to keep us from evil so that we do not cause pain. And I thank you for blessing us and keeping us and for making your face to shine upon us and being gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us and you give us peace. So, Lord, we gladly invite you to rise up and let your enemies be scattered and let those who hate you flee before you. Amen. Amen. Amen.